Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to show you how to turn a god awful brown chocolate coloured teapot into a beautiful whimsical Alice in Wonderland teapot. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Well, I'm just going to take a minute to thank my mum for graciously allowing me to steal her teapot <laughs> because although I'm English, I don't actually own a teapot. I don't like tea. Uh, <laughs> so literally all I'm going to do is rub it down just to take some of the shine off and then spray it with some grey um, car primer um, and then right now I am just adding a little bit of armature to the I don't know the vent bit on the teapot lid um, just so that I have a place for Absalom the caterpillar at the top of the teapot. <laughs> For the majority of this build I am using my Super Sculpey original um, but I do go on to use my Cosclave for Absalom um, only because he's kind of protruding a lot from the teapot so he's more likely to get broken but for the majority of the time I am using my Super Sculpey. Right now I am going to begin the sculpt making the Cheshire Cat. <laughs> So for the whole time that I was making the Cheshire Cat, I was saying to myself that I was not going to make Tim Burton's Cheshire Cat. I really didn't want to copy anybody else's idea. I wanted this Cheshire Cat to be my own Cheshire Cat, but God damn it, could I make anything other than Tim Burton's Cheshire Cat? I couldn't do it. Uh, I think it's purely because we all have like these preconceived ideas of what these characters look like, because we have been fed them so often through every type of media possible that's actually really really difficult to create something that's so well known as your own um, so there are elements of this teapot that you can probably see that belong to Tim Burton or Disney um, but I did my best to try and make a good portion of it mine now that I have successfully created baby Sinclair from dinosaurs <laughs> I can now go on to add some extra details to try and make him look like a Cheshire cat as opposed to um, a 90s dinosaur. Was he 90s? I think he was a 90s dinosaur. Um, now I am going on to add his teeth. I have literally got a bag of teeth because every sculptor should have a bag of teeth <laughs> um, made up from previous sculpts. Um, I literally just sort of cut them down a little bit and then use my tweezers to push them into my Cheshire Cat's mouth. I did use some Super Sculpey Bacon Bond, not Bacon Bond. I will remember this sooner or later. Clay Adhesive. Um, yeah, some Clay Adhesive just to hold the teeth in. Um, and now I'm going to add sort of the lips. I don't think cats have lips, but the lips <laughs> um, around just to hide like all the terrible marks that I made shoving the teeth into his mouth. Whenever you're sculpting on a glass sheet like I am right now, just make sure that you do keep referring back to like your teapot for instance, um, just to make sure that it's going to continue to fit after you've sculpted it. There is a lot of times where I have sculpted something and then referred back and realised that it, I've made it too big or it's not in the right pose. Um, so do keep checking back on your teapot to make sure that it still fits because otherwise you'll end up with characters that are way too big. <laughs>
that my Cheshire Cat is pretty much sculpted, I am literally going to go in and do some fur texture. To do this, I'm using my pin tool. Um, I'm trying my best to go in the motion of fur, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't make sense. But I am literally trying to go in the motion that fur would go, rather, because fur is not straight. And if you look at anything that's hairy, it sort of splays here, there, and everywhere. So I was trying to go with that as opposed to like really, really straight fur. Now I am going on to make the tiniest, fiddliest, bloody roses that I have ever made in my entire life. They're worth making because they look so small and pretty and dainty, but my gosh, they're really difficult <laughs> to make because they're so small and delicate. Um, but my method was to make a small bud, attach it to a cocktail stick, and then create lots of balls of different shapes flatten them out on my ball stylus. I sort of upgraded the size of my ball stylus to the size of the ball of clay to make petals. Spend six hours doing that and then constructing the rose. It, <laughs> it's a bit of a long process, but if you've got patience, it really is worth it because the rose looks quite small and pretty and, you know, really worth it. And you don't need to use cutters either. I'm just funny about wanting everything to be exactly the same size when in reality roses are not exactly the same size so it's probably better to not do it my way. <laughs> Once you have your rose, um, don't do what I'm doing, um, and that is putting clay adhesive onto the primer. Apparently it has like a bad reaction to the primer, and your clay will slip off. Um, so I did end up having to, once I had baked this, sort of take off parts of it and then super glue it back on because uh, it just kept slipping off. There's something in the clay adhesive and the primer just did not like each other. Um, so I do stop using that method eventually, and you'll start seeing that I don't put clay adhesive anymore on the the teapot itself um, most of the clay pieces have stuck on fine the bigger pieces um, I have purposely taken off after baking um, once it's cooled down and then super glued them back on um, just to make sure that they don't keep coming off but uh, yeah so just be careful with putting primer and clay adhesive together <laughs> Now I am moving on to the next representation on my teapot. Um, we're going to do the Mad Hatter's hat. I wanted to, if I could have, I would have put all of the characters on there completely and properly. Um, but obviously you have a finite amount of space on a teapot. So I decided to pick elements of characters um, and add them to the teapot as opposed to the whole character. And obviously where the Mad Hat is concerned, his hat is his most iconic piece. So. Um, yeah, I decided to make his hat. Um, I wish I'd done his hat pins a little differently though. I used floral wire to make his hat pins, but they burnt. And they didn't burn. I'm talking out my bum. They bent, even. <laughs> <laughs>
attach the hat, I realised that he was sitting on sort of like the lip of the teapot right there at the top. Um, so I did have to pack a little bit of clay behind the teapot and sort of blend it together that way, just so that the, the hat itself wasn't like super curved over. It looked a little bit contorted otherwise. After that, it went in for its very first bake. I wanted to add the little drink me bottle purely because even as a kid I found this incredibly unusual. I can safely say that I would never drink anything that was just left out on a table with a label saying drink me on it. I always thought it was really strange. However, if you're having a conversation with a doorknob, then I suppose drinking some mysterious liquid that just has drink me written on it isn't that strange. <laughs> So after failing at so many attempts at making the eat me cookie, I genuinely, I don't know what was wrong with me. I couldn't do it. Um, I decided to make a mushroom foresty thing instead, just because of the frustration. My cookie just kept on coming out looking like, I don't know, it was just a round spotted dot of clay. Didn't like it. So <laughs> um, yeah, I went with the mushroom forest instead. Um, so apologies, the eat me cookie isn't there. I hope you still can see the whole Alice theme without it. Um, after that I bunged it in the oven again for a second bake. Now that I have finished throwing my creations around, because that's standard practice for you to at least ping your stuff off the table at least once per creation and then spend like five minutes underneath your desk trying to figure out where it went, <laughs> I'm now going to go on to make the white rabbit. Um, I think personally for me this is my favourite part of the teapot, I really liked how he came out. Um, I'm not sure if it's him or the pocket watch that I like the most. but. Together they make a really nice element to the teapot and I'm glad that I chose to make him such a big part of it. His eyes are made up of um, leftover Millie putt that I had from a previous project. I'm pretty sure it was my backflow incense burner. Um, I can leave a link at the top of the screen if you are interested in learning how to make an incense burner. Um, so yep, just click up here. Um, but yeah, otherwise if I have any leftovers, like where it comes to epoxy putty clays, um, I tend to make like teeth or eyeballs out of it. So yeah, my white rabbit, although he has black eyes at the moment, he won't have black eyes at the end because I didn't want a demon rabbit, let's face it. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're Millie Pup, so it's a good way of recycling materials, especially if you've overmixed. <laughs> This is the moment where I want to say stop and do not do your ruffles like this. Do not do them the same way I'm doing it. You will hate me when it comes to painting stage. Use coloured clay. Do not use clay that you need to paint. Because my god this was difficult to paint when it actually came to time to painting it. The amount of swearing I did. Obviously you don't get to hear me swearing because you know, well, I'm not allowed to swear on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, yeah it was, it was like some proper swearing where it came to painting in between all of those little ruffles um, so yeah use colored clay don't don't use clay you have to paint um, also when you're making the collar do the smart thing and put the jacket bit on first and then put the collar of the coat on don't do it the wrong way around like I'm doing right now because it once again makes it difficult on yourself I have this habit of learning this after when I look back and think oh that would have been so much easier if I'd done it the other way around so yeah pre-warning Put that bit in first and then put your collar on.
whatever it came to his pocket watch i decided for my own sanity more than anything that i was not going to spend six kajillion hours trying to make teeny tiny clock hands and all the rest of it that goes with a clock it's not happening i painted it on and <laughs> i don't think i could ever make it that small in polymer clay um although there are people out there that could you know kudos to them and that sometimes making small stuff is like hard i can't make it any smaller than this not really so you guys that do miniatures kudos to you <laughs> I wanted to add an element of togi wood um, onto my teapot um, so I did that with like the little this way that way signs although I did actually forget to write this way and that way on the signs I might do that later <laughs> uh, so yeah this is my little piece of togi wood <laughs> To make all the leaves for the forest I decided against cutting all of the leaves individually I mean you can do it if you've got the time to do it then by all means cut the leaves individually but I'm just using this diamond cutter for now to sort of cut each leaf individually and then you know go on to detail them to make them look like leaves and then add them to my forest that way once I have done that it is time to go in for its third bake <laughs> So I spent quite a long time trying to figure out how I was going to incorporate Alice into an Alice in Wonderland teapot. I really didn't know what to do. Um, so I came up with the idea of creating a negative space for her instead. So I made this keyhole and painted her in at a later time. And I think that this probably worked better than me trying to squeeze Alice in there somewhere. <laughs> So obviously I had to add the Queen of Hearts in there somewhere because she's such a, a wonderful character. In fact, she's one of my favourite characters in the whole book. She's such a eccentric character. So I decided to add her crown to symbolise our wonderful Queen of Hearts. <laughs> In hindsight, I should have put a little piece of floral wire behind this particular small piece of clay just to give it a little bit of support. Luckily, it didn't sag in the oven, but it is a real risk. So if you're going to do something similar, then I would put a piece of floral wire behind it. If you are asking yourself, why is she adding three random rectangles to her teapot? Then don't worry, have faith. A painting stage it will make sense <laughs> I wanted to add a little dormouse because let's face it in both the Disney and the Tim Burton version he, he actually has very two very contrasting characters between the two films you've got one that's like proper drunk on tea <laughs> and then you've got one that's like a mighty mouse <laughs> so you, I didn't know which version to go with so I decided to go with neither and made a tiny sleepy little dormouse um, and I think he's really cute. I love him and he's sat quietly napping in the crook of the teapot which I think is a perfect little spot for him. After adding a few more details I decided it was time to go in for its fourth bake. This poor teapot has been in the oven so many times. <laughs> 
now that I am going on to create Absalom the caterpillar on top of the teapot, I forgot what it was called then, <laughs> on top of the teapot, I decided to use my cosplay. It remains far more flexible. So should it be dropped or, you know, manhandled a little bit more than the rest of the teapot, it would take the abuse a little bit more than the Super Sculpey. <laughs> To give my armature wire just a little bit of extra support other than the glue that I put in there right at the beginning of this sculpt, I am adding a little piece of clay in there just to hold it down. Um, once it's baked, it will not move. <laughs> To make Absalom, I literally rolled out a sausage <laughs> of clay, um, cut down the middle and then sort of squished him onto the armature wire. Now, if you're having trouble getting your clay to stick to your armature, um, then you've got a couple of options. You can either wrap it with uh, floral wire or you can paint it with clay adhesive. Either way should help your clay to stick to the wire um, although with cosplay I have never once run into that issue I have a couple of times with the super sculpey but with cosplay it's just it kind of sticks to everything <laughs> This is actually my second attempt at making Absalom's face. My first attempt it looked awful, <laughs> like nothing like Absalom whatsoever. Um, and I don't think this Absalom looks anything like any other Absaloms either. So maybe I just succeeded in my original task of not making a standardized Alice in Wonderland teapot. I want it to be my own. So yeah, this Absalom is my Absalom. It does not look anything like anybody else's Absalom, although he is still blue like the Tim Burton one, but shh, never needs to know. <laughs> make his antenna antennae antenna his things on top of his head whatever they're called <laughs> i popped um two bits of clay over some floral wire and then just sort of poked them in i think they're antennae i'm pretty sure it's antennae <laughs> I wanted to give Absalom his monocle, so to do that I wrapped some floral wire around one of my ball styluses until I had a monocle shape. Um, then I attached it to some masking tape um, and then added a little bit of UV resin. I made sure that all of the UV resin was like touching the sides of the monocle using a cocktail stick and then cured it. Once I had cured it, I turned it over, peeled it 
off and did the same on the other side and it came out really really cool once i did that i poked a small hole next to um absalom's eye on the sculpture um took the monocle back out because it didn't need to go in the oven as well and then i went on to finally finish the baking process i did bake number five <laughs> So before we get into the painting montage, I just wanted to let you know that this time I was using, well, not this time, like every time I was using my Arteza acrylics um, along with my Dala Rowney, Dala Rowney, black and white paints. Literally, those are the only paints that I used. Um, so yeah, roll the painting montage. <laughs> Thank you. 
And that's it, guys. My Alice in Wonderland teapot is finished. Thank you so much if you are still here. Like, you've <laughs> done me a world of good just by sitting through the whole video. So, you know, you're legends just for still being here. Um, if you are new to the channel, then please do take a moment to subscribe. If you like this video, there is bound to be something else in my playlist that you will thoroughly enjoy watching too. Um, I guess that's it, guys. I will see you around in the next one. Catch you later, guys. Bye. <laughs>